Hi everyone, welcome back to Think Science. Today, we will be discussing photosynthesis, or more specifically, the light-dependent reactions. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button, as well as the bell icon so you can be notified on more science videos. Before we get started, we wanted to start off with the question of the day. Who first discovered photosynthesis? Leave your answer in the comments. First, let's begin with an overview of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes place in two parts, light-dependent reactions and the light-independent reactions, also called the Calvin cycle. Photosynthesis takes light energy and converts it into chemical energy in the form of glucose. Glucose provides the cell with energy as well as fixed carbons that the plants can use for many biological purposes, including growth. During the process of photosynthesis, plants produce oxygen as a byproduct that humans then breathe. In this video, we are going to focus on the light dependent reactions. First, let's take a look at the chloroplast, the site of these light dependent reactions. Looking at the chloroplast here, we can see the thylakoid. The thylakoids are membrane bound compartments in the chloroplast. Inside the thylakoid is a substance called lumen. And here outside the thylakoids, we have stroma, which is an aqueous fluid. These reactions are going to take place in the membrane of the thylakoid. What happens is the light is going to excite the electrons in P680, which is Photosystem 2's primary donor. Photosystem 2 is just this protein complex in the thylakoid membrane. So once the electrons in P680 are excited, they're going to leave P680, leaving P680 with no electron. So in order to get its electron back, P680 is going to turn to water and steal water's electron. So now P680 has an electron, but the water molecule has lost an electron, causing the water molecule to fall apart. The hydrogens that were in the water are going to stay in the lumen while the oxygen molecules are going to leave the plant and this is where we get the oxygen that humans breathe. Meanwhile, the excited electron that had left P680 is in a high energy state and is being transferred to different molecules. And as that is happening, they are going from the previous high energy state to a low energy state. As the electron is losing energy, that energy is being used to bring the hydrogen molecules that are outside in the stroma inside the lumen, creating a concentration gradient where the hydrogens are trapped in the lumen. But the thing is, these hydrogens don't want to be in the lumen. They are moving against their concentration gradient. In order to get back outside into the stroma, they flow through this ATP synthase and turn this motor that jams a phosphate group onto ADP, making ATP. So getting back to the electron that was moving to a lower energy state, it's eventually going to reach P700, where P700 is going to accept it. Then light is going to hit it again, and the electron is going to get excited and be passed onto other molecules going to a lower energy state. The lost energy while the electron is moving to a lower energy state is going to be used to change NADP plus to NADPH. So at the end of the light dependent reactions, plants have produced NADPH and ATP, as well as an oxygen byproduct. Stay tuned for our upcoming videos that will detail the light independent reactions, the next step in photosynthesis. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more science videos. If this video made sense, leave a comment to let us know. Be sure to also leave any questions and we will do our best to answer. Thank you for watching Think Science.